We are turning the page and you have added now this page, which is 16.2a notes, solving log equations. And you have added the page that says 16.2b notes. And we will have a 16.2c notes. I just will have those for you next week. Okay? So we are moving on from expanding and condensing to solving log equations. Now, I will tell you right now that these problems on next week's test are going to be the ones that are worth more points than others. Okay? They require a bit more work and you have to show that you understand it. So we have a group test coming up on Wednesday. Wednesday, what's Wednesday's date? The 31st. And then the individual test will be Friday, February 2nd. Okay? So this is an important lesson because it's where a lot of the points are going to lie. All right? So there's a couple different ways that log equations can show up. Here's my first equation. What do you notice about this equation? They have the same base. Hmm, okay. So I have log equals log. This part is exactly the same as this part, correct? The log and the base. What do you think that means about those two? If those parts are the same, then these parts also have to be the same. In other words, I could write x equals 3. Does that make sense? Now, one thing about log equations, you always want to check your answer when you're doing these. Because there are some log equations where things do not work out. So let's just verify. If I were to plug this in, and you don't have to, depending on your teacher, whoever's watching this video, um, I don't care that you need to show your work to check this. This is a pretty simple one. But when we get down to ones like these, I am going to want to see that you're checking your work. Okay? So if I plugged in a 3 there, I get a statement that matches. We're good to go. What about this problem? Is this the same type of problem? Yeah. Do I have log equals log? Mm -hmm. Do I have matching base? Yeah. Yes. So what does that mean I can do? This has to equal this. So 2x plus 8 has to equal 6x minus 12. Yes? Mm -hmm. So how would I solve this? Combine like, terms. Combine like terms. So what should I do first? I can move the 6x or I can move the 8 or I can move the 2x or I can move the negative 12. I'm going to move the 2x because I like getting my x's together first personally and I like keeping them positive which is why I'm moving the 2 instead of the 6. So what does that leave me with? 8 equals 4x minus 12. Now what am I going to do? Add 12. So I have 20 equals 4x. Now what? Divide by 4. And x equals what? Okay. So far so good? Okay. Now, the reason why we need to check our answers is because there are certain numbers we cannot take the log of. I can take, I'm just going to use base 10 because that's what's in my calculator, but I can take the log of a plain old number, yeah? And get an answer. Might not be a pretty answer, but I can take it. Can I take the log of a decimal? Like 0 0.5. Oops, sorry. Log of 0 0.5. Can I do that? Yep. Can I take the log of a fraction? Oops. Like log of um, 1 half. Because isn't that the same as 0 0.5? <coughs> what other kind of numbers are there? Can I take the log of a really big positive number? 
Yeah. Can I take a log of a really small <coughs> positive number? Yeah. What numbers am I avoiding here? Negatives. Negatives. Can I take the log of a negative number? No. Hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. Why can't I take a log of a negative number? Well, I was just using base 10, right? So let's say I have log base 10, and let's use a reasonable thing. Let's use like negative 100. If I asked you to solve that, you would have to set that equal to x or y or whatever, right? And you would say 10 to the x power equals negative 100. If I apply a power to a 10, is that going to give me a negative number? It's not, is it? Because if I apply it, if I put that as 2, I'm going to get positive 100. If I put it as negative 2, I'm not going to get negative 100. I'm going to get positive 1 over 100, right? So this negative thing causes a big issue. So the reason why I say we need to check our answers is we need to check to make sure that whatever answer we get does not make this a negative number. Does that make sense? So, for example, when I got my 5, I just need to plug 5 in here and here and make sure that everything's still positive. So if I plug it in here, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 8 is positive, right? Positive 18. Over here, 6 times 5 is 30 minus 12 is mm -hmm positive 18. I got log base 12 of 18 equals log base 12 of 18. That should make sense. Yes? And it also keeps everything positive. Okay? So when we have to check our answer, we have to make sure that we are not giving ourselves a negative log. Does that kind of make sense? All right. Let's go to the next one. Do I have log equals log? Uh-oh. How do I do it if it's not log equals log? Well, step one right here. Nope, that's not step one. That's step one for the next one. Sorry, step one. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Well, kind of here. Get all the log terms together. I need to get the log by itself is step one. So what do I need to move if I need the log by itself? The one. Let's move the one by subtracting it. This should look familiar, by the way. Is this familiar to you? equals 6. Now this was something that a lot of people struggled with. What do I do next? How do I get rid of that 3? Divide by 3. So I have log base 7 of 3x minus 2 equals 2. How do you think I can solve this? I'm trying to get what x equals. So I got to break x out of the log. How do I get rid of a log? Change it to exponential form. So what's my base? 7. What's my exponent? Equals? Equals 3x minus 2, right? Well, 7 squared is 49. So I'm going to add 2. Running out of room, so I have 51 equals 3x, divide by 3, and x equals, what's 51 divided by 3? 17. And I got my answer. Yes, ma'am? Uh, I changed from here, I went to exponential form. So I took my base, wrote it, that's my exponent, equals this. Okay, so we've done that changing forms when things are a little bit more basic. Now it's just a little bit more complicated there. So what do I need to check? Well, first off, I need to check to make sure everything stays positive. But I should be able to check to make sure that it's a true statement also. So if I do 3 times 17, what do I get? 51 minus 2 is 49. 
So I'm trying to see, does 3 log base 7 of 49 plus 1 equal 7? Well, what is log base 7 of 49? Isn't that the same thing as log base 7 of 7 squared? Yes? What is this? 2. two. So 3 times 2 plus 1, does that equal 7? It does equal 7. So my answer is good. So, so? So if I have one log, what am I doing? I get the log alone, move everything to the other side, and then switch to exponential form. Yes? Do you have to check it like that every time? Do you have to check it like that every time? Do you want to know if you're getting it right? Okay. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All right. What about this one? This one is not a single log. And could I write this as log equals log like I did on those first two? I couldn't because if I moved this log over here, I still have a 2 there, don't I? So I can't just do log equals log. So this is the one where I want to get this down to one log. How would I get that down to one log? Using my condensed rules, right? So that gives me log of what? This is addition, so what am I going to end up doing with those two? Multiply them. 2x parentheses x minus 5 equals 2. Now that I'm down to one log, I can solve it the way I did the last problem, which is by doing what? get the log alone, and then change it to exponential form, right? Is the log alone? Everything that's, everything that's on this side of the equal sign is part of the log. So I can go to exponential form. What is the base of this log? 10. So that's going to be my base in exponential form. What's my exponent going to be? 2 equals what? 2x, x minus 5. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. What is 10 squared? 100. Equals, let's go ahead and distribute, 2x squared minus 10x. Now, we haven't done something like this in a while, but I have an x squared. If you had me last semester, you should know what to do here. What are you going to try and do here? Get everything to the same side as the x squared and then do what? Factor. So I'm going to move this 100. So I have 0 equals 2x squared minus 10x minus 100. Now before I factor anything, let's simplify this. What can I take out of there? So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by... 2, let's get rid of it. 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 50. So this should be a pretty easy factoring, shouldn't it? If you had me, you can snowflake. If you don't snowflake, you can use whatever method you want to. Just factor it. If you snowflake it, we end up with, let's see, negative 50 and negative 5. What are my two numbers? 10 and 5. Which one's negative? The 10. And I have x squared and x squared. So, I'm sorry, I have x and x, not x squared and x squared. My bad. So I have x minus 10 and x plus 5. So I got two answers from here. What's my answer? And from here? So I got to check some answers, don't I? So I'm going to start off with checking x equals 10. You ready? If I plug that in, always go back to the original problem that was printed on your page. If I go back here, that means I have log of 10 minus 5 plus log of... 2 times 10, 
and I want to see if that equals 2. What is 10 minus 5? So I'm saying that log 5 plus log what? 20 equals 2. Let's see. If I were to condense these, that gives me log of 5 times 20, which is 100. Does log 100 equal 2? Log 100. Yes, it equals 2. I know there's a glare there. So does my answer of x equal 10 work? Yes. Let's try x equals negative 5. Log of negative 5 minus 5 plus log of 2 times negative 5, does that equal 2? Well, what's negative 5 times negative 5? I'm sorry, negative 5 minus 5 plus log of 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now, here's the part where it gets tricky. If you were to condense these, you would end up with log 100, wouldn't you? Just like that. The problem is we can't deal with these to begin with, so we can't follow along with condensing them. Why can't we deal with those? Because they're negatives. Because up here, I could plug this step into my calculator, couldn't I? Log 5 plus log 20, and it should still give me 2, right? But here, if I try and plug in this step, log ten, negative 10 plus log negative, oops, negative 10, it's going to give me an error. So because it made things negative, I can't even worry about condensing. That answer has to be thrown out. Does that make sense? Now, why is it thrown out? Is it thrown out because it's a negative number? No, it's thrown out because when you plug in that number, you're trying to take the log of a negative number. Okay, so my only valid answer there is 10. Okay, all right, turn the page, back side. We got ourselves two more. All right, what do I do here? Same process, right? So I'm going to need to do what here? Condense. So that gives me log base 4 of x plus 2, x minus 4, because addition is going to become the multiplication, equals 2. Now what? Change it to exponential form, right? My base is 4 to the second power equals x plus 2, x minus 4. What next? 4 squared is 16. And what am I going to do over here? Multiply it out. x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. Where am I going to head from here? Get everything to the side of the x squared and then factor, right? You take a minute and try and finish off that problem. All right, can I jump back in here? Yeah. I'm going to move the 16 and I'm going to combine like terms at the same step, if that's okay. So I have x squared. These two together give me what? Minus 2x. What was that? Oh, sorry. Hang on. There you go. Those two give me negative 2x, right? Yeah, and negative 8 and negative 16 is negative 24. And from here I factor. And what do I get when I factor this? x minus 6 and x plus 4. Again, I don't care what method you use for factoring. What's my answer here? x equals 6, and from here, x equals negative 4. Now i got to check both answers, yeah? So let's start off by checking x equals 6. That would give me log <coughs> base 4 of 6 plus 2 plus log 
base 4 of 6 minus 4, and I want to see if that equals 2. So this becomes log base 4 of 6 plus 2 is 8, plus log base 4 of 6 minus 4 is 2. I'm dealing with all positive numbers, that's good, right? So we're good. So when I condense those, that would give me log base 4 of 16. Is log base 4 of 16 equal to 2? Does 4 to the second equal 16? Yeah. Yes, so x equals 6 is a good answer. Let's try x equals negative 4. If I go back to the original problem, log base 4 of negative 4 plus 2 plus log base 4 of negative 4 minus 4, and I want to know does that equal 2? Well, what's negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2, and negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. Do I need to go any further? No, because I have negative numbers and that's an issue. So what does that mean? That doesn't work, so that answer is thrown out. Okay, so-so? All right, last problemo. Log equals log minus number. Hmm. Well, if it was log equals log, I would know what to do, right? I would just set 3x minus 4 equal to x minus 6, but it's not log equals log. So what do I do? Let's get the logs on the same side. So I'm going to subtract log base 2 of x plus 6 from both sides. That makes it cancel over here. So I have log base 2 of 3x minus 4 minus log base 2 of x plus 6 equals what? Negative 2. Now can I do some condensing? Okay, what's different about this condensing? It's going to turn into division, isn't it? So I have log base 2 of 3x minus 4 over x plus 6 equals negative 2. Yes? So let's go to exponent form. What's my base? What's my exponent? Equals. Now this looks a little complicated, doesn't it? How am I going to solve this? Well, the easiest way that I can solve this is make this a fraction, because if I have fraction equals fraction, I can do cross multiplication. So what is 2 to the negative second power? 1 over 4. If I set that equal over here, do you see how I can use cross multiplication now? 1 times x minus 6 equals what? 4 times 3x minus 4. And I can go from there. So I have x minus 6 equals what? 12x minus 16. So I'm going to move my x. Negative 6 equals 12x minus 16. I can add 16. So I get 10 equals 12x. Is that right? Or have I made an error somewhere? You're right. That's supposed to be 11x. Any other errors? Okay. So now, do I have another error? Where? Yes. See? Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's not 10. Okay. We're all sorts of screwed up. 6 plus 16 is what? 22 <laughs> equals 11x. Oh, that's going to work out nicer. So I'm like, point me out. So I get x equals what? 2. I like that answer. A lot better than a fraction. Do I need to check my answer? Yes. So if I come back up here and I check x equals 2, I'm trying to see, does log 
base 2 of 3 times 2 minus 4 equal log base 2 of 2 plus 6 minus 2. So, doing some simplifying, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 is 2. Does that equal log base 2 of 8 minus 2? Now let's think about this. What is log base 2 of 2? 1. What is log base 2 of 8? Isn't that the same as log base 2 of 2 cubed? So what is it? 3 minus 2. Does it check out? Yep. So my answer x equals 2 is a good one. Okay. All right, so a little different spin on the logs. I'm going to go ahead and pass out the homework for you. It's uh, worksheet 16.2a.